Robert McNamara was the Secretary of Defense from 1961 to 1968, during which time the United States was engaged in the Vietnam War. This was a troubled time for the military, politicians, and the people in the United States. The country was split in support of the war in Vietnam. Many believed that it was a pointless action that would do nothing more than kill our troops. Others believed that we needed to be involved in the war to stop the spread of communism and enforce the Truman Doctrine. Robert McNamara was an important individual in history because of his actions during Vietnam and how he wanted to fight the war. In the end, these beliefs would lead to his resignation from office. If Robert McNamara had been listened to by Congress and military establishment, Many of the military mistakes that happened in Vietnam could have been avoided. Hi, my name is Dr. Edwin N. Rowley, and I was inducted and in, drafted into the United States Army on June 4, 1969, and eventually released, I believe it was in May of 1971. I was assigned to the 8th Army Headquarters Command Judge Advocate General's Corps. I am currently a tenured professor at Texas A&M University in Kingsville, Texas, and I'm in the Department of Communication. My name is Rudolph Thomas. I served in the United States Army 8 of March 1965 to 14 July 1971, attained the rank of Staff Sergeant, uh, served with the prestigious 173rd Airborne Brigade and 82nd Airborne Brigade. Before Robert McNamara became the Secretary of Defense, he was the first person outside of the Ford family to become President of Ford Auto. He didn't pretend to be a politician. He looked at war from the point of a businessman, looking for the cheapest and most, select, most effective solution. Because of this, his view on how to run the war differed from those of most men in Washington, who had come from a more military background. These men thought of war as total annihilation. Vietnam began when the Viet Cong started stretching the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, or Arvin. At the time, Arvin was being used to police civil disobedience. The South Vietnamese were ready to stop the spread of communism as much as the U.S. So what the Viet Cong did was to spread them out as far as possible. To spread out Arvin, the Viet Cong did things on the far reaches of Vietnam so that Arvin wouldn't have a central place to operate. Because of this, in 1950, the U.S. started its involvement in Vietnam. The United States was first involved only as advisors to Arvin, but later, on August 4, 1964, after a North Vietnamese boat fired at a United States ship in the Gulf of Tonkin, America sent their troops completely into Vietnam to help. The United States also needed to protect their trading interests in Southeast Asia. The United States had rubber factories as well as oil refineries in Vietnam. If Congress had decided to leave Vietnam alone, they could have been sacrificing billions of dollars a year in oil, rubber, and nickel. Lastly, Vietnam was very profitable for American companies who received military business contracts. The way the U.S. started off the war was by putting limited troops into Vietnam to help. But after many losses, generals pushed to have as many soldiers as possible put into the war to enforce their powers sternly. This is shown by a memorandum written on December 6, 1965 to, president, to the President from George McBundy, who wanted to add 600,000 more troops. Nearly two years later, it wasn't working because the Viet Cong was smart, and McNamara knew this. This was the wrong way. Of 1967, he wrote a memorandum to the president stating three alternative attack methods in Vietnam. These were an extension of the current program, an intensified attack on Hanoi and Haiphong, and the emphasis on the infiltration routes of the South 20th Parallel. I believe America's first mistake was letting their feelings of McNamara take over Congress. By doing this, Congress became very weary of McNamara and often didn't follow his directions. This was a mistake because his view of running the war was a fresh approach to an age-old tradition of war, which was to go in, 
On Sunday, December 3, 1967, the Washington Post ran a story regarding McNamara's reasons for leaving the Pentagon. He blamed the government for the amount of troops lost and thought that if his vice had been taken, he could have saved the lives of countless soldiers. Rudy Thomas clarified the ordinary soldier's view on the events in Vietnam and revealed the many deceptions taking place during the war. Recruiters didn't care who you were, to them you were only a body that they could train to kill. In response to a question about your expectations after the war, he said, There were no expectations. You just tried to survive to see your wife and kids again. He also made another interesting point. He told me that if any of the head leaders of government had been around, they probably would have been shot by their own soldiers. During my interview with Rudy Thomas, he said, They underestimated the Viet Cong. We never had a chance. When soldiers headed into war, they had a preconceived notion that they would be heroes to their country, and the Viet Cong wouldn't stand a chance against America the Great, because they had greater technology and were on the right side. During the Vietnam War, the United States sorely underestimated the strength of the communist government of North Vietnam. The U.S. believed that with the right propaganda, the government would fall like a house of cards. They were of course mistaken, because the government was stronger than even the most pessimistic person thought it was. Robert McNamara knew that in order to stop the spread of communism and to uphold the Truman Doctrine, they would have to help build up and fortify the government that was already in South Vietnam, which was a democratic government. The hearts and the minds. We were not winning hearts and minds. We were uh, kicking people, killing people, uh, blowing things up and taking names, but we were not winning hearts and minds. This quote from McNamara sums up another of our greatest faults. Americans had no idea how committed to winning the North Vietnamese people were. Viet Cong didn't care for their lives, but only for the whole of their country. They would run suicide missions in which hundreds or even thousands of them would come against you, not even flinching as people died around them. They could also do this because the Viet Cong beat the United States in sheer numbers. In McNamara's memorandum to the president, his belief is that they should not try to keep soldiers and materials from going into the north, but rather keep it from coming out. Instead of trying to put an economical strain on the capital city of Hanoi, the U.S. would try to deplete the soldiers that were out in the field. The idea was not only liked by McNamara, but by most notably the Secretary of the Navy, who completely agreed. At that time, the Secretary of the Navy was Paul H. Neitz. This is important because later that year, he became the Secretary of Defense after Robert McNamara resigned. This quote from Richard Nixon shows exactly how Vietnam was. People were not willing to change, and I believe because of Congress's rigidity and the basic structure of the war, McNamara's attempts at fixing the system came out to nothing. After Vietnam, McNamara knew there was no way to change those set in their ways and resigned. In the end, Vietnam was one of the worst losses in U.S. history. They lost 58,000 good men who were fighting for their country in a war which many believe shouldn't have been fought. Though a small consolation, communism was put at bay for the time being, but the price that it cost was too high.